Hi everybody and welcome to this edition of the MLB Playoffs and right now we're switching roles over to the NLDS so we just talked about that so Nationals Dodgers and Braves Cardinals so for the um, Dodgers is they had a really for them last night it was a come from behind win where they led where they were down two to one and then in and then really it was three hitters that inning Russell Martin Kike Hernandez, Justin Turner, all single-handedly. And really the Dodgers offense, they batted around. I think they sent 11, 12 batters to the plate in that sixth inning. So completely changed the game and possibly the narrative of the series. And instead of the Nationals having a 2-1 lead with Scherzer on the mound against Rich Hill, where the Nationals, and knowing they have Strasburg in game five, them in command, now all of a sudden the Dodgers are in control right now. And sure, this is the Nationals game to win. And you have to go back in game five for Los Angeles is anybody's game. But for the Dodgers, if there was any doubt about them winning the series, it has gone away, at least for now. That sixth inning basically changed the entire narrative of that now. Now they're in complete control. And if they just somehow, somehow, Maybe they play a similar game to what the Nationals and Brewers were, and they're in that exact same position. Maybe Rich Hill does pitch effectively, and the bullpen's lights out. They could win today if it if, if it's similar to what the Nationals Brewers game was with Max Scherzer. So on that side, on that note, the two most effective hitters for the Dodgers, I'd say, who stood out the most: Justin Turner, obviously, five for fourteen at that home run last night. It really put the Nationals away. And then Max Muncy, this series, he's walked a lot. He's walked four times. And he's hit two home runs and five RBIs. In fact, Muncy, was that, when he hit that home run the other night, uh, it was two to nothing. He made it two to one. That was the turning point. He worked out walks in game one. Had, drove, in, drove in a run in game one. Muncy's been huge this series. For the Dodgers, he's big reason why they're in the series, especially why they have the series lead. And what happened is, and think about another hitter. Think about this, Russell Martin, who basically has been the backup catcher this year. It's really been Will Smith down the stretch. He has played probably the least he's probably ever had in his career. Comes in. Gives the Dodgers a lead, the lead, a two-run double off Corbin, and then hits a two-run home run in the ninth. When the Russell Martin, who getting his first action the entire postseason, comes in and takes over, and really they've out, they out, and then also another number they outscored the Nationals, ten to two, ten to two, after the Soto home run. And it'll be Rich Hill today. And, and, and today it's going to be Rich Hill. Heavy bullpen usage, I'm guessing. And then it will be... And then, it'll, and then if they can't win today, it's going to be Walker Buehler in Game 5 back in Los Angeles. So the Dodgers are, are obviously in control of the series. And really for the Nationals, what has been their biggest weakness is the bullpen. And really, in Game One, they were they were never really in position to win Game One. They're never really in control. Game Two, Doolittle gives up that home run, and Daniel Hudson makes things very interesting. He ends up loading the bases, and Corey Seager RBI single away. That game's tied. And in this game, they give up nine runs, nine out of the possible ten runs, in, in four innings pitch. And yes, Corbin does count as the bullpen. So again, a bullpen that has been a weakness all year long for this team all of a sudden when they need it most when they need the bullpen to be effective at their most since they knew Anibal Sanchez was not going to go probably what he did in five innings was probably the most you'd expect him to do he had a great start he was in control of the game sure he gave up that home run 
And now Corbin, who he had, it was similar to what it was in the first inning. But instead of giving up a few walks in a single, maybe the game's tied, uh, he gave up. So in order, that two-run double to Russell Martin, and then by the time he gave up that two-run double to Kike Hernandez, he had to come out of the game, and then it was 5-2, to two, and then Justin Turner hits that three-run home run. Make it 8-2, that's all in the bullpen. That is 100% on the bullpen right there. And that was basically it. So for the so if the Nationals want to win today, and again, as I said earlier, they went from that inning was the maybe the turning point in the series. Since they went from being in control of the game, obviously the plan was to give the ball to Corbin. I was thinking, okay, give them one, hope maybe even two good innings. Maybe it's now Doolittle and, and Hudson. Two one lead, Scherzer. And then they and they they're in good position to win the series. Now all of a sudden, if you're the Nationals, you're down two one, you have to win today, it's do or die. You have no margin for error for the rest of the series. And you have Walker Bueller back in Los Angeles. So this is the Dodgers series to lose. This is their series to lose. They're in control now, not the Nationals. And again, in a 1-1. In a 1-1 series in the DS, Game 3 is always the game of who establishes control. And the Dodgers, being reminded of them being maybe even significantly better than the Nationals, we were reminded of that in game one and that one half inning in game six or game three where the offense just took completely over long at bats you know waiting for their pitch and just taking advantage of taking advantage of the situation that was the Dodgers in complete control so did that Dodgers team who was Ten outs away from being down 2-1, facing Scherzer. They just flip the script right there. And Scherzer, I think, needs to be great. He needs to be much better than he is in that wild card game. He can't be uh, maybe what he was down the stretch in the regular season. Oh, six innings, three runs, 10 Ks, or oh, five innings. I pitched okay in five innings. Since who are you going to go with? Corbin's off limits. You need Strasburg for game five. What are you going to do if Scherzer's not great? I think Scherzer has to be great today. And he needs help from the offense, too. So really what you need to do is jump on Rich Hill, kind of jump in on the bullpen early, keeping Scherzer completing control. And I think he needs to go at least seven, at the very least, maybe even just eight or nine. Just this is Again, even the what's supposed, what is supposed to be Really, they're good part of the bullpen in Doolittle and Hudson, who really who they had really had any trust in in this series at all. Gay gave them some scares as well. So maybe this is Scherzer's game to finish. Maybe you see what, maybe you see his pitch count. Like maybe it's a similar situation to Adam Wainwright yesterday, where he throws 120 pitches in eight innings. Or a Garrett Cole-like situation where he does the same thing and if he is anywhere near efficient, maybe they say, you know what, 105 pitches through eight, finish the drill, go out there for the ninth. Maybe you throw 13 pitches per inning and you finish. Or So whatever the case is, this is going to be a starter-dependent game. More than anything, this is rare in today's game. This is Scherzer, who, again, the Nationals opted to give on give extra rest. Since, again, either way, you're trying to figure out how to get win game four in Washington. And they could have pitched him last night. Oh, things didn't go so well. Time for Sanchez in game four. So, again, do I criticize them for the Corbin plan? No. No. It's like a lot of planned executed play. In basketball, you drop a perfect play, wide open shot, they just miss it. 
Or in football, they drop a good play, throws in the end zone, oh, but they drop it. Or, oh, he was open, but he just missed the throw. It was a good plan. It was a good plan. They just, they just didn't execute it. And if they would have, they would have had a 2-1 lead. So, again, Nationals were in that game really for the entire game. They're down 8-2. to two. That next half inning, they responded, made it interesting, an 8-4 to four game. And sure, they lost 10-4. And, and as a Nationals fan, that loss stings as a 10-4 to four loss since... It was a game that you knew they could have won. It wasn't like the Dodgers went up six to nothing out of the gate or eight to nothing out of the gate. No, it was a game that the Nationals were in control with for more than half of the game, and it was theirs to lose. And the Dodgers just took over. So in game five, it would be um, it would be Strasburg very likely against Walker Buehler. Both of them would be on standard, or well, Buehler would be on five days rest. And sure, and sure, or Strasburg would be on regular six, four days rest. So again, the Nationals, if they want to win this series, have to do it with starting pitching and reliable offense. That's how they have to win the series. They're not, they're not going to win the series with their bullpen. They need to go all in on starting pitching. Heck, heck maybe in the last two games, maybe you do, maybe you do something very similar to what the Astros had to do, where you. Maybe your starters pitch a combined 17 innings, eight, 14 to 18 innings. I think what I'd say is the Nationals need in starting pitching and offense. And again, Bueller can be vulnerable at times. He can be vulnerable at times. I'm sure, it can look like the best pitcher in the world at times. But they gave up. They on July 28th. They scored six runs off of him. They can possibly do that again. And again, the question is, Bueller got into trouble. Can they keep him in trouble? And can they take advantage of him getting into trouble? Since they, they had opportunities to score, now they just need to capitalize. They need, they really need, they need a breakout game on offense, which is something the Nationals have not done all playoffs. So again, the Dodgers are in control of the series. The Nationals, yes, they can. They can win back-to-back games with Scherzer. And Strasburg, they can win the series, but the Dodgers have the clear advantage since, so they're they're in control now. So how surprised will be if the Nationals win? Not terribly surprised. It'll be a very hard fought series win. But for the Dodgers, what times maybe let the Nationals potentially in the series and almost take control of the series. Regardless, if there's a game five, which I think there will be a game five. It will be a hard-fought series for both teams. If the Nationals, the Dodgers win, they were a team that at times looked way better than the Nationals, and the Nationals really fought till the end. But in the end, the Dodgers were the better team. If the Nationals win, it shows that even when they face adversity, they were down in the series. There's times where the Dodgers maybe could complete, take completely take complete control of the series and show how much better they were, or the Nationals could pull off an upset. So now it is time for Cardinals Braves. So the thing about that series is the Braves lead two to one. And for this series, and really my my opinion, this series could have gone either way. This has been a series where the Cardinals, the Braves had a three nothing lead in game one, gave it up, really Goldschmidt started it, and they tied it really in the eighth inning. 3-3, three, three, and then obviously Ozuna at that two-run double. Then when it had 5-3, then Wong followed, I think, with another two-run single. 7-3. Well, looking at the score, that is, that is a game the Braves should have won. And Game 3 is a game the Cardinals should have won. So either way, the next two games have really been a series of starting pitching. It has been starting pitching. Flaherty grinded through seven innings, gave up three runs, including that two-run home run to Duvall. Flaherty was great. Fulte was great. Would have, could have pit, potentially pitched eight innings. Very easily could have pitched eight innings. But they had to pinch hit, and that was Duvall who hit the go-ahead pinch hit home run, three to nothing. That was a game the Braves 
we're, we're really in control for the entire game. And then game three. Yesterday, we'll talk about yesterday. So yesterday, it was Adam Wainwright versus Mike Scirocco. It was a huge game, obviously. And Wainwright, who this might be potentially, since they're now down 2-1, to one, his last MLB start, kind of did what Wainwright used to do. Threw 120 pitches in seven innings. Did everything in his power. And, and fought very hard for that 24th out. Could only get 23, so went... Really gave them eight good in, eight good innings when it was one to nothing, and it was, it was it was a pitcher's duel. It was a pitcher's duel. Old old an old pitcher, Adam Wainwright, who was the closer of the 06 Cardinals team, was the ace of the Cardinals, kind of towards the end of the last decade, really in his prime from 2009, I'd say through 14, really. And near the very near the end of his career, comes out and kind of gives him a throwback performance. And Soroka, who again gave up a double in the second inning, I think it was to Ozuna, who has been the best, maybe the best hitter in the entire series, certainly on the Cardinals end of things. Made it a, and then it just took a sack fly. That was it. But he was complete control. Really throughout the game, but Wainwright was better. Braves player of the game is Dansby Swanson, who, hitting eighth, hit almost hit a home run for one double and then tied the game. He tied the game in the ninth inning. And probably the probably the most clutch player of the series, Adam Duvall, who gave the Braves extra re- breathing room in game two and gave the Braves the lead. It was off Carlos Martinez. To the Braves' best hitters this series, if you had to say offensive MVP so far, clearly Duvall. Yes, it's a limited amount of time, but just whenever they need the big hit, he gave it to them. And probably the go to the series so far is Carlos Martinez, who has pitched 2.1 innings, but has gave up, given up five hits and six earned runs. So again, talking about the series, talking about the series, Game one is a game the Braves should have won. You can't blow a three nothing lead. And the Cardinals wall is a one 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 nothing lead. This is Carlos Martinez your closer. You have to win that game. You have to finish the game. So if things and granted, ninth inning saves very odd from closers. If it's Mariano Rivera or nowadays Josh Hader, the odds of winning are extremely high. Or if it's another closer, shaky bullpen, it's closer by committee. The odds of winning the game drop significantly. So either way, this is a series where the Braves should have a 2-0 lead. They should have won games 1 and 2. The Cardinals should have won game 3. So they think the series is about where it is. Sure, maybe the Braves could have swept the series. But again, the struggles of Carlos Martinez, who made a 7-3 lead, in, a comfortable 7-3 lead into 7-6, and then one nothing lead turns into a loss. To the Cardinals, who, again, I think they had multiple opportunities to be in control of this series. They had Jack Flaherty in Game 2, who I thought the Cardinals were very likely going to win that game. It's really been their offense. Other than, really, you talk about that 8th and ninth inning against the Braves, it's been nowhere. It's been nowhere, basically. They haven't had any offense at all. They've scored one run in the last two games. So Jack Flaherty has an opportunity to give them... Get them control in the series of a two two to nothing lead, and then Wainwright has a chance to give them a two one lead. And you give the ball to Martinez. The Braves are one out away from winning. In fact, the Cardinals were one out away from winning until Swanson at that double into having a three to two to one lead and being in control to close the series out today. So the Cardinals stole Game One. Have given up every opportunity possible to be in control of the series. And now the Braves are in complete control of the series. It's their series now. And like the Nationals-Dodgers series, they have full team game five. They're feeling good back in Atlanta. They're in control. If the Dodgers, if the Cardinals can win, they'll feel good about Jack Flaherty. So really, 
Both teams feel good about game five, possibly. So what's it going to be today? It's going to be Dallas Keuchel on short rest. So I think maybe Julio Tehran, who I thought for a long, for the longest time would start, he they might do maybe a piggyback type thing. Since the only relievers you really trust is maybe you go back to Shane Green potentially, and then. I guess it's Melanson who would have to pitch for the fourth time in five days. Is pitching every game in this series. We're gonna have to pitch back to back days once again. So we'll see. That could be an interesting combination. Dakota Hudson starting for the Cart Cardinals, and then Game Five is Game Five is. Could be Fulty versus Flaherty, who both teams feel really good about it. So again, if the Braves win today, that's the series. If they lose this, if they lose today, then Game Five of Fulty back in Atlanta. So again, I think the storyline of the National League this year in the playoffs have been one team has struggled to get get. I struggle to take over. The Nationals at last night had their opportunity to take control of the series and be in great position to win the series. They didn't do that. Now the Dodgers are in control. Same thing. The Cardinals, as I just said, an opportunity to really have a comfortable 2 nothing lead back in St. Louis. Couldn't do that. Couldn't win that game that they needed. And then yesterday, Wayne Wright pitched great. You're one out away from having a 2-1 to -one lead and being, being in control of the series. And you don't do that. I think I think this year I think both series have kind of been momentum a lot of momentum swings, where one team who's in control can't stay in control, and one team that where their backs are against the wall seems to respond, and that's what it's been. Cardinals in game one, Braves in game two, and in game three. So does does what happen? And one, two, and three does it, do things change? Do the Cardinals force a game five? We'll see. This will be a very interesting closeout series. So that's all in doing the updates. If I had to guess when I might be back on again, I don't know. Could be back on as soon as tomorrow. Maybe even on Wednesday we'll see. But also later this week we'll preview both championship series, which odds are Braves-Dodgers and very likely Astros-Yankees. Thank you for listening to part two.